Hey, it's your friendly neighborhood wizard, Wizard Foo, bringing you another video in the Load Ragger 5 vs. 5 development series. Oh man, aren't you excited? I am. Here's what I've been working on. It's um the AI system. So I'm currently working on the AI system. And once again, this is a two-dimensional mock-up of a three-dimensional game that will eventually be called Load Ragger and V5 vs. 5 multiplayer online real time. Um, so check it out. There's creeps now can spawn. So that little um, white dot over here, right here, is where the creeps spawn from. And I went just over here and changed into the lumberjack roll to get the axe, and I can now fight them. And there's health bars. And then after a while, they'll spawn some more. So it's a pretty simple thing, but um, at least the mechanics of um, how enemies might spawn is partially in place. Uh, these will probably need to be, these spawners will need to be in, I'm thinking either random or perhaps specific locations. Like maybe, you know, they'd randomly appear on empty areas of the, the match, the arena that you've cleared of trees. Or maybe they're actually just in predetermined places, I'm not sure. Or maybe there's actually sort of like swaths of trees that are randomly cut during each match and the enemies spawn there. All that isn't really important. What's important is that there is a system now that can spawn entities. So let's check out some of the code. Um, here is this creep spawner entity. And um, here is the AI for it. Basically, when it first starts out, is if timer begin, that's a way to test if uh, this is the first time that this entity is running the timer. Um, it sets the timer to zero, so next time the timer isn't begin. And then it delays for a little bit until it spawns. And spawn is basically based on a, a random intelligence and also a delay after it runs, so it can't run again for a certain duration. Um, and basically all they do is just uh, set a frequency for how... How, how long it takes to spawn for each one of these to actually uh, crop up and spawn. So even though we're calling spawn creep four times in one tick, it's actually setting a frequency of one second between them. So one spawns immediately, and the other three have spawn every second after that. Um, this is actually just a location here at the end. Based on the, the creep spawner's position, it goes 20 pixels to the right, and zero pixels up, and zero pixels in the Z direction. So that's how that all plays out. Here's the behavior spawn and behavior frequency. Behavior frequency is incredibly simple. It just sets the AI's frequency, current frequency setting for how often it will spawn. And then behavior spawn basically figures out, these are some of the, it figures out what variables it's gonna need, like um, what position it's gonna need to spawn the entity at, uh, whether they can spawn them anywhere, how, what kind of intelligence it's gonna have, and even its difficulty factor. And here's the spawn funk. Um, this goes and bails if there's too many AIs that have been spawned. So there's a maximum spawn limit. And then um, it also bails if the parent is now dead. So if this creep spawner had died during the meantime of it, if this spawn funk being called, it wouldn't continue. Um, and then it goes and it, it actually tracks how many spawns it's, it's going to need and then uh, decrements it when it's actually performing that spawn. So it can kind of keep track of that that's pretty important for this is I figure what I can't remember exactly what this was for but a lot of this code I'm sort of like pulling from Songbringer and then sort of simplifying and um, making it appropriate for load ragger but also I'm trying to what I'm trying to do here is make a long-term system so that I can reuse this code in a future game without any modification this is something that I I had to take from Songbringer and modify now I'm trying to think how can I make this whole system able to be used later again without any changes so then it goes and just spawns the entity just creates it um, and then sets its position sets its current Z flag which is like overworld or underworld so it can sort out so when the render system runs and the collision system runs it can sort out which entities to focus on because there's 40,000 entities currently that's like a lot of a lot of entities all with sprites and all ready to go because you can switch to the underworld at any time switch back to the overworld instantly um so then yeah after it after it this basically just either calls that spawn funk immediately or it calls the spawn funk after a delay so that's how spawning works and uh here's the health bar this is pretty simple stuff it basically just creates the health bar as a sprite and then um if it needs to show that the 
the health bar, it shows it and sets its current scale and color. And then if not, it just updates whether it's its opacity so it can fade out and all that. So there you go. Um, AIs being able to be spawned, health bars, and that's all for this video. Thanks for watching.